you've written a piece about uh, the gun manufacturers, the gun manufacturers fearing the NRA. That's right. Many people misunderstand the relationship, and it's understand the misunderstanding is un is 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 completely understandable. Uh, in, in most situations, uh, the industry behind a lobby group tells that lobby group what to do. The industry that provides the money um, and and the the the, the ground level backing. Um, when it comes to the gun industry, in the uh, like everything else having to do with guns in this country, you can make no assumptions. Everything is strange when it comes to firearms. And that goes for politics, too. And in the politics of firearms, it is the lobbying organization in Washington that calls the shots. Um, and this is for a couple of reasons. One, uh, gun buyers are so uh, uh, prone to organized activity that if a gun company crosses the NRA, the NRA and its local affiliates can organize a boycott of a particular company that can potentially destroy the company. And the companies know that. And this has happened in the past. This is not a hypothetical uh, issue. Um, back in 2000, when Smith & Wesson uh, agreed to various regulatory compromises with the Clinton administration in what would have been a historic compromise between the gun industry and the federal government, uh, gun rights groups, gun owners groups uh, organized a boycott of Smith & Wesson, one of the most storied names in the gun industry, that almost ruined the company. Uh, the company had changed ownership. It sh they had to shut down their factory. People were returning Smith & Wesson firearms. And this was a signal of what the gun rights lobby can do if it decides that a particular gun company is out of line. Smith & Wesson, by the way, immediately reneged on this compromise, fell back into line, and got the blessing of the NRA and went, went forward.